Hello, everyone. This is a few minutes with Peter Granish, but it's not going to be just a few minutes because I waited too long to have this conversation. But I always want to remind you just not to be considered investment advice. Always speak to a licensed financial advisor before making any investment decision and read all our disclosures. You know, when I was thinking of speaking to our next guest, I was reminded of just so many good times, but in a sense, being in battle with him and his organization from the late 1990s. So joining me now is Chris Powell, the Secretary Treasurer of Gatter.org. Chris, first of all, it's been too long since I spoke with you. Well, it's great to see you, Peter. But I do see your appearances elsewhere on the internet. So oh. I'm, I'm, oh. Not, I'm not lacking uh, your, your face. Well, but it's a face that was always made for radio. So, it, uh, <laughs> so Gatter, which I'll ask you to explain to people, but I've always considered Gatter the unsung hero for the gold investor. And, and I'm not singing to the choir or, or trying to brown nose or anything. I don't think people who would only be involved in gold in recent years knew what it was like 25 years ago, what took place and what abuse Gatter and some others, me and a few others that stood by Gatter, thick and thin, who demonstrated and clearly was proven correct that gold was greatly manipulated. And uh, and sure enough, uh, I had to resort, if you remember, I don't know if you do, I had to wager a million dollars with the guy that we considered, or I nicknamed at least, Tokyo Rose of Gold Forecasting. Which was always ironic because he worked for a gold website. Never could understand that, but he's long gone. And uh, I would like to send him my tinfoil hat for autograph, Chris. But uh, but the bottom line was, uh, it was a battle back then. And you and Bill Murphy and some others really, really were uh, fighting. It was a David versus Goliath battle. And like in scripture, David won here too. So Chris, first of all, for those of us who've seen a tenfold increase from those days, I remember us talking about will gold ever go over 300 again. And now people have this disappointment at 24 and change, but that's another, we'll do that another talk another time. Let's go back and first tell people a little bit about how GATA came about and what it's done over these almost, you know, over 25 years. Yeah, I, I remember the days when we were struggling at $300 and wondering if we'd ever get, get over it, Peter. It's been a long, long time. Um, GATA was uh, was formed uh, back in 1998, and I guess we were formally incorporated in January uh, 1999, uh, really because our chairman, Bill Murphy, former commodities trader, uh, who had launched his own internet site of commentary, uh, began to uh, notice that uh, the monetary metals in the futures markets, anyway, were uh, suffering a lot of manipulation. Uh, at least he he sensed it was manipulation. He didn't think it could be anything anything else. Um, and he began writing about it at uh, his internet site, lametropolecafe.com. Uh, I, at that point, was just looking around for uh, contrarian uh, investment ideas, and I had... Uh, Stumbled into uh, uh, gold uh, gold news newsletter, uh, which is you know now run by Brian London, uh, and uh, uh, gold newsletter was saying that uh, you know gold was really low right now, and I, I had heard somewhere buy low and sell high, so that uh, uh, provoked my interest in the sector, and I began to uh, follow it a little bit. I quickly bumped into Bill, and I very quickly tired of his. Uh, complaints that uh, the gold and silver markets were manipulated. And I, 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 I subscribed to his letter and I wrote him an email one day saying, look, uh, uh, there, there's a lot of evidence that you're correct, but if you are correct, uh, such manipulation uh, would be uh, contrary to uh, the Sherman Act and the Clayton Act and 50 state antitrust acts. And instead of you just you know complaining about it every day, somebody should form a committee to hire uh, uh, you know, some uh, some lawyers to uh, bring a class action uh, lawsuit on a contingency basis. And if uh, anybody wanted to start such a committee, uh, I would uh, contribute uh, $500 to it. And uh, Bill said, hey, that's a good idea. Let's do that. And, and so we did. Um, I suggested that because uh, as a newspaper editor in Connecticut, uh, 
I had had a lot of experience uh, with antitrust law. We, my, my paper was a local independently owned paper that uh, was the uh, victim of uh, anti-competitive tactics by bigger chain-owned newspapers uh, in the state that tried to prevent us from getting uh, certain syndicated features. And we had to bring antitrust lawsuits in order to, to get them. And uh, and as it turned out, we we did we did prevail. So you know that's why I, I had more than a a layman's uh, understanding of antitrust law, uh, and why I complained to Bill that you know we ought to start a committee to uh, uh, do something about this and bring a class action lawsuit. So we we did end up uh, with uh, enough uh, uh, donations fairly quickly that we could hire a, a very prominent antitrust law firm uh, in Philadelphia, Berger and Montague. And they did a lot of research and came back to us and uh, told us basically tough luck because they had researched it and uh, discovered that the Gold Reserve Act of 1934 gave the U.S. government uh, complete authority to intervene in and manipulate any market in the world. Yeah. Uh, and that if we you know, brought a class action lawsuit against the government, we would lose. Uh, so that, that was how we spent our, our first money, finding out we had just wasted our first money. But... Uh, I, I think very quickly we realized, well, the only way to beat this thing is to publicize it. Uh, and that's what we have you know, been doing for the last 25 years. Well, one of my most memorial ones, and I don't know if you would recall it, but I wouldn't be surprised if Bill Murphy's not and forgot it. When I was emceeing at a conference and we both stood on chairs doing our impersonation of the Zulu part from that famous movie, I remember it well. I'm pretty sure it was in Vancouver. So one of the more memorable times, uh, Bill was certainly uh, very colorful in his presentations. But what, I, don't, I don't want to just skip over it because it was a true battle. And, uh, and listen, and you guys lived it and breathed it every moment. I was just on a, a sideline trying to give support. But this was what you guys were doing 24-7. And you were getting beaten up by, I think the worst insult, worse than Tokyo Rose Nadler, was people in the gold producing business who was in their best interest to get this undone and get a better price for their product. And they made fun of Gatter and said, nah, there's no such thing and uh, no, no such thing as manipulation. And then really, I guess also, and correct me, Chris, because I don't, you know, at our age now, memory is just a memory. Uh, when Andrew McGuire hit and the stuff he was bringing out that was happening in Europe and all, it really then took an international favor. And it really got some some people seriously, not many, taking a real hard look at this. That's why we had that great. I thought it was I, I was never at a better conference than the one that took place in London uh, for a whole lot of reasons. Uh, but I really thought publicly we came out with and demonstrated that we weren't these kooks and we weren't these nuts, that we had legitimacy to our argument. And it wasn't that long after when the news would break, indictments would take place, and people were found guilty of manipulating gold. You yeah. Uh, you know, the, the industry doesn't want to believe uh, manipulation of the gold and silver markets because it's bad for uh, selling their uh, their shares. Uh, if 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 Ghana tells people that uh, you know there's a there's a great investment opportunity in gold, but you've got to realize that uh, as Jim Rickard said on CNBC about ten years ago, when you own gold, you're fighting every central bank in the world. I, I don't think that's true anymore, but back then it was uh, it, it was true. Uh, we have been documenting ex extensively uh, how gold uh, price suppression and to a lesser extent silver price suppression has been Western central government and central bank policy for decades. The docu documents are all over the place. We have admissions from, from central bankers. Uh, we have minutes of government meetings. Uh, suppressing the gold price is virtually the first objective of modern central banking. Unfortunately, you know, gold, gold mining companies don't want investors to know that. Uh, you know, we're telling them about the uh, enormous naked short position that governments have established uh, in gold. And if anybody ever calls the short position, the gold price likely will go to the moon. But we also tell investors 
as Rickard said back then, when you own gold, you're fighting every central bank in the world. Well, you, now you're not fighting every central bank in the world these days, but you're still fighting the U.S. Treasury and the and the Federal Reserve, and that's bad for for business. That does not sell gold shares. And increasingly over the years, uh, we have not been invited back to uh, financial conferences uh, that have a heavy interest on touting uh, mining shares. Uh, we're, we're considered bad for business because we tell people the truth of what they're up against. It's not just, you know, gold and silver are going to go to the moon. Uh, it's that, you know, gold and silver may go to the moon if we can ever defeat government attempts to suppress the prices. People don't want to hear that. Uh, but, uh, you know, back back then, you know, you talk about the tinfoil hats and the, the ridicule we, we got. We don't get that anymore. We're pretty much... Uh, uh, we're pretty much ignored uh, by uh, uh, the people who used to ridic ridicule us because we produce too much documentation. And I would invite um, people who who doubt what I'm saying just to go to our internet site, gata.org, and look in the top uh, left column. You'll see a, a page titled The Basics, and there's a pretty long summary uh, of uh, gold price suppression policy uh, right down to uh, the current day, uh, with uh, the documents or links uh, to the documents, uh, uh, the, there's admissions. Uh, there's you know government uh, agency minutes. Uh, it's it's all on the record. It's 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 policy. Um, people don't want to discuss it now. At least, well, <laughs> what's the old saying? That I know it's been attributed to various people. Uh, you know, Einstein and uh, philosophers. Anything is. You know, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. Uh, well, I, I'm going to revise that. Uh, you know, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then they say, oh, come on, everybody knew that all along. Yeah, well, listen, uh, it has changed somewhat, obviously, because of the, I think the great help was the paper trading moving to Asia and being taken out of the the London, New York uh, we and we're not the first, but we many of us called it for years the COMEX. We called it the CRIMEX because that's where the raids would happen, and they would happen and take gold down for months. Now, when they still do show up, and they, I think they still do, not anywhere in the frequency, they don't last as long. So I want to ask you two uh, two questions, and then I'll let you go. And I know you're a busy man still. So one, you hinted in just our talk now that it's not as severe because not all central banks are doing it. And I'm assuming what you're talking about is the recent acquiring of physical gold, uh, China wrapped around brick thoughts, all this. But what about the repatriation? The fact that so many of these governments have repatriated their gold from the United States. Is that anything people should be looking at or have involved in their thinking process, Chris? Well, of course, uh, the repatriations are are indications that central banks are realizing the manipulation that has been, you know, run out of the Federal Reserve in uh, in New York. The Federal Reserve Bank in New York has 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 held thousands of tons of uh, custodial gold for for other countries. Um, I will claim credit on behalf of GATA for for letting many central banks know just how the gold price suppression scheme was being run out of the New York Fed and the Bank of England and the LBMA. Uh, and I think that knowledge has certainly spread around the world. I mean, we've had uh, uh, direct contact uh, with the uh, the Bank of Russia and the People's Bank of China and several other uh, central banks. And I believe uh, are providing the evidence of gold market manipulation and the uh, mechanisms of gold market manipulation uh, uh, has uh, prompted these central banks to uh, realize what was being done. Uh, that uh, you know, gold price manipulation is, has basically been a policy so long and undertaken so long to uh, not just to defend uh, the dollar and uh, United States interest rates, but also uh, to uh, suppress the values of uh, other currencies around the world and to suppress uh, commodity prices. And this is properly uh, a matter for resentment 
by uh, by countries that issue their own uh, currencies that compete with the dollar and that that try to export uh, commodities whose prices are suppressed. Uh, I think we have had a very big impact on uh, on central banks around the world. And in fact, uh, uh, back in uh, I think it's two thousand five, two thousand six, the uh, deputy chairman of the Russian Central Bank, the Bank of Russia, gave a speech to the summer meeting of the London Bullion Market Association, which uh, was being held at the Kapinski Hotel in Moscow. The only words in English he spoke were gold antitrust action committee. Uh, we uh, found out about that. We heard about it. It was hearsay to us. Uh, I uh, got in touch with the LBMA and I said, hey, uh, uh, we heard the Russian central banker, Ms. Askov, gave a speech that mentioned us. Could you could you, uh, you know, give us a copy of his speech? No, they would not give us a copy of his speech. Uh, so I looked up uh, Bank of Russia on the Internet site and I saw they had a, a uh, an English language page and they were located at 12 Neglanaya Street in, in Moscow and they even listed a fax number. So I uh, I sent a letter to Ms. Askov by fax saying, uh, listen, we heard you mentioned, uh, mentioned us in your speech to the LBMA and the LBMA will not give us a copy of it. Could you could you give me a copy of it? And I'd be very happy to get a, a copy of it, of it in the original Russian because uh, at that time uh, I was still a newspaper editor and one of my reporters was fluent in Russian. He was a graduate student in Russian and I told Mazeskov he could translate it for me. Um, strangely enough, Mazeskov got back to me within a day uh, he said he would be very happy to give me a copy of the speech, but he wanted to control the translation. And so he was going to send the speech to his friend who was president of Moscow Narodny Bank in London, and uh, the president of Moscow Narodny Bank would send me the translation. Well, it took, uh, I think, four or five weeks, but I finally got it. And sure enough, uh, <clears throat> Uh, Ms. Askoff mentioned Gold Antitrust Action Committee. He he, he mentioned it in kind of uh, uh, a teasing way. It was, uh, uh, you can look this up on the internet site, but he, he essentially said, many, many of you have uh, uh, heard of the group of economists who came together to form the Gold Antitrust Action Committee. Well, of course, <laughs> I'm a college dropout. And, uh, you know, Bill is, uh, you know, a restaurant graduate of Cornell. Uh, but uh, we, we apparently gave Ms. Askoff the impression of being an economist, and we did have some very smart uh, economists you know, working with us. Anyway, Ms. Askoff, uh went on that uh, uh, Gata had uh, <clears throat> argued that the uh, the gold price uh, was being set uh, not necessarily by the uh, regular uh, laws of you know supply and demand. Um, uh, he said he, he didn't want to express an opinion on that, but he uh, he thought it was kind of strange, I think, is how he how he put it. But uh, this, I think, was Russia's way of telling the London bullion bankers back in 2005, 2006, that Russia was now on to them, that Russia now knew that the gold price uh, was being suppressed uh, by the paper gold market that was being run uh on the Crimex and on, on the LBMA, and that, uh, you know, that they were going to do something about it. And sure enough, uh, very soon after that, uh, uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin was photographed uh, holding a gold bar at uh, a uh, gold conference in the Russian Far East, and uh, I think the uh, city was Madigan. And uh, he was quoted as saying he'd instructed the Bank of Russia to start buying gold on all markets. And that was physical gold. And I think that was really the uh, that, that, that was the beginning of the end of uh, the paper gold fraud when central banks, particularly the Bank of Russia, uh, began to understand in large part because of God's work uh, that uh, uh, the uh, the gold market was being rigged uh, by uh, paper certificates, by, you know, Paper issuances of claim claims on gold that uh, uh, did not uh, did not did not exist. Uh, now you know we 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 certainly informed the Russians uh, about this. Uh, uh, some of our guys had uh, uh, conference calls with the, the People's Bank of China. I've had face to face meetings with a couple of central banks in uh, in Asia. The word has gotten out. This, this racket is it's not quite over. But uh, the rest of the world is no longer participating in it. Participating in it.
Yeah, well, thank, and that's why I just said about the young son in a battle of decades that Gata has done and uh, never seeking personal strokes on the back, but glad to hear that their work was accomplishing what you did. But where the area is this, and I saw it on your website, and I have to, and you can take whatever time you want because I used to get in trouble at the gold shows, Chris. I used to, you know, I emceed them for 25 years. And when I would say owning silver was like kissing your sister because it was always second class in a sense, the gold. But to me, and I think to others, and obviously I read your work, so I know what your answer is, there, there seems to still be a significant amount of manipulation going on. At least I know you asserted it. So could you mind sharing in some capsule way? Or I know people. I'm going to urge people when we put this video out, to uh, I'll put a link to the piece. But you still have demonstrated and believe that there's ample manipulation to the silver price. So why don't we just end on that? Tell me what you think about that. Sure. Um, I, I wrote an essay about this the, the other day. Uh, uh, in 1965, when President Lyndon Johnson signed the Coinage Act of 1965, uh, he made a very candid declaration. He 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 warned people. Now, uh, even though we're taking silver out of our coins here in the United States, uh, don't start hoarding uh, the pre-1965 silver coins in anticipation that the price of uh, the value of those coins will go up, because the Treasury Department had a big silver hoard and would sell silver into the market as necessary to keep the silver price down. Uh, so people would not hoard the pre-1965 gold coins. This uh, uh, signing statement by President Johnson uh, is on uh, Gata's internet site. I, I linked to it in my essay the other day. Uh, uh, it's in an archive at uh, the uh, University of California, I think at Santa Barbara, where I originally uh, got it. Uh, silver price suppression has been official U.S. government policy since uh, uh, silver was removed from the currency in the United States in 19, 1965. Now, there's other developments since then. I think it's uh, acknowledged that uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, the custodian uh, for uh, the major uh, silver exchange traded fund, SLV, is maintaining not only uh, uh, a uh, the, the, the metal of credited to SLV. It's also maintaining a, a big hoard of, uh, of silver on its own own books. Um, the uh, commodity desk chief for JP Morgan said a few years ago on CNBC, responding, trying to dispel uh, complaints that Morgan was uh, manipulating the silver market. Uh, Blythe Masters uh, said, no, no, uh, yes, Morgan was, was trading silver, but Morgan was trading silver only for clients. And of course, the negligent, negligent CNBC reporter didn't have asked the follow-up question. Well, do your clients include the U.S. government or any other governments? Uh, well, I, I believe, uh, and I wrote in my essay, that there's uh, enormous circumstantial evidence right now uh, to suggest that J.P. Morgan Chase has basically reconstitu reconstituted the U.S. Strategic Silver Reserve and is using it to uh, tamp the price down, uh, to, to keep the price down, so it, it doesn't follow the gold price uh, up. Um, you know, people uh, pe people can, can read that essay. There's links to other documents there. But I think that's what's going on, that uh, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase is uh, managing the de facto U.S. Silver Reserve now uh, to, uh, to keep the silver price below uh, $30 an ounce. And the fundamentals for it have improved over the years. That was my other argument against it. I didn't think it had the same standout reasons, but the general fundamentals and usage of silver has demonstrated. And I think that's what's been also frustrating people, that the normal gold-silver ratio should be a lot better than it's been. So if I'm getting the gist of what you're saying is, yeah, there's still some manipulation in gold, not like it used to be, but silver is still being manipulated basically in the same way that it's been for years. Yes. Yeah, that's 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 right. And uh, uh, I mean, people should just do thought thought experiments here. I mean, <clears throat> governments don't like the monetary metals because the monetary metals, by their nature, compete with government currencies. Governments don't want people rushing out of their currencies and rushing out of their, their government bonds 
into the monetary metals. That will diminish government's power. Uh, why should anybody think that uh, the governments should work so hard to keep the gold price down and then leave the other monetary metal, silver, alone to explode the lie that uh, uh, you know the gold price is, is giving you the proper signals? Well, of course, they. you can't manipulate gold without manipulating silver as well because it's a monetary metal as well. And there's there's lots of evidence out there, which I tried to compile in that essay the other day, that uh, there's certainly motive and opportunity and mechanisms already in place uh, by which the U.S. government uh, strives to keep the silver price down as well. Well, Chris, it was uh, too long. And uh, please, I know you'll communicate, and I'm sure Bill will watch this so I can say this directly to him. <laughs> I miss you, buddy. It was always entertaining when you were speaking. That was one thing I knew when I was MC, and I was not going to fall asleep in my seat when Bill Murphy was going to speak. And uh, it's good to see you guys. And, and again, I want to speak for a lot of people who may have not known it, and most didn't. If you've held gold over these last couple dozen years, one of the main reasons that helped do it better is the work that Gadda did, and they never... Never got the official recognition for it, but let me be at least one person to say thank you because I know the work that you did help led to the uncovering and finally the charges and found guilty uh, of it for things that most people said was just poppycock. So thank, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, guys.